Hello guys, welcome back to Custom Gamer. This is part two of Deep Down. If you missed part one, I'll put an annotation on the screen about nowish. So we just turned off the Combine Force Sword and now we're going through the tunnel. Now, these tunnels are one of the areas in the game I didn't really like too much visually. I mean, generally, in Source, it's quite hard to make long tunnels actually look nice anyway. But I think some more details could have been added, especially to the ceiling and wall areas. Uh, it generally repeats a little bit too much, I think. I think the corner sections use too few brushes as well, so it ends up feeling very, very jerky on the corners rather than the smooth curve going around, which is a little bit of a shame. But you know, gameplay-wise, it's perfectly functional. I'm just not too keen on the aesthetic of it all. Now this area is kind of interesting because you get to race against the Combine APC. This is uh, something me and James talked about a little bit when I was beta testing the mod. He was saying that you can either run in front of it like I did here or you can fall back behind it and it will just go off in front of you. It's because the uh, behaviour of the APC in Half-Life 2 is very very simple. You can basically get it to drive forwards and shoot and that's about it. There's not really much else you can do with it but he hides it quite well here. And uh, the introduction of it is quite nice, having it come out from behind the shipping container. It's a nice fun moment where like, I don't think I've really seen in any other Half-Life mods where you're kind of racing against a Combine APC like that. Nothing comes to mind anyway. Yeah, th this area here, in fact this whole section really I wasn't too keen on it, if, if I'm honest. I mean, there's a kind of a disconnect between the gate here and the... Uh, another gate further on around the corner and uh, the first problem I had with it is that it's not really clear where you're meant to go from here onwards I mean when I first played the mod I was looking around this area for ages trying to find a door in the wall that I could go through or some other way to progress it didn't actually occur to me that you just kind of meant to walk down this huge area on foot uh, James did add the kind of flare in the distance there to kind of get the player's attention which uh, was a great addition that certainly helps but I just feel like this gate here is kind of redundant, why not have the car just stop at the gate up here where the, uh, the actual progression of the map is. There's kind of this large dead space here with no actual gameplay. It just kind of serves to confuse the player a little bit, I think. So as you can see here, there is actually a door here then. This is kind of what I'm talking about, so you'd stop the car next to this gate and you'd see the locked door here. And then you'd probably see the uh, tunnel grate here, and it just makes a lot more sense than stopping all the way back there and then walking that huge distance. And then kind of going back to what I was talking about at the very beginning of part one, saying that uh, the visuals kind of die from extremely good to kind of very very mediocre. I think this area is a good example of that. It's very very simple geometry wise. Uh, a lot of the corridors are just kind of very very boxy, uh, not a lot of detail added. The only reason I bring it up a lot is because, you know, that, that first area in the mod, that large outside area with that huge battle at the start was was Valve quality essentially. It's just a shame that that same quality level isn't present throughout the entire mod. This area itself is a bit confusing as well. You've got these giant fans up in the ceiling and the first time I saw this area I figured those fans were going to be part of some puzzle or have some gameplay around them. I thought I'd get sucked up into them or something when I moved under. I believe that was the original intent for this area. Um, I can't remember, me and James talked about this area a little bit and uh, I can't remember exactly what he said, whether it was originally going to be a fan puzzle but he decided against it in the end. Yeah, um, I think the fans should have been de-emphasised somewhat if that's the case. They, they, you still have that huge kind of sound effect, they're very very prominent in the room. You kind of go directly underneath them. And when you do, you're not really sure if you're going to die or not. <laughs> I kind of hesitated a bit when going through here, I figured, yeah, this isn't going to be good, but no, no problem. Yeah, I think the other issue I have with this room is that it's very, very fiddly to actually pick up the uh, 
the ladder piece you had to go and grab with the gravity gun. It kind of gets stuck against the player and the gravity gun. It's very, very awkward to move it around. I think something that could have really helped the visuals in this area is just little simple things like railings uh, that will stop the player falling down that pit in the centre. Uh, just little things like that which add little details, kind of greebling to like the walls and ceiling and things like that. It doesn't even really need to make much sense, it just breaks up the silhouettes of the brushes a bit. Which really really helps in a game like Half-Life or any brush based engine game really. You just want to hide the, uh, the simplicity of the environment as much as you can. a little bit of graphical corruption in the sky there. I think that's a bug with the uh, Steampunk beta not loading skyboxes correctly at the moment. This happened on a couple of my maps as well that I've been working on. I don't think it's James's fault at all there. So we emerge back into the control room. So this would have been really nice I think if you'd actually been able to park the car outside of this door here is that you emerge back into this control room and then it's just a short short hop down the stairs to get back in your car. As it stands now you have to run all the way back to the, uh, the first barricade. It, j it just seems kind of irrelevant really. This whole stretch of uh, road here between you and the car. I do like the kind of abandoned vehicles around the corner there. It's uh, Quite creepy. Good job. Hold on. Again, it's some more nice use of Alex dialogue. It's one of the best things in this mod is the implementation of Alex, I think. You know, even like vis visual gripes I have aside, uh, just the gameplay with Alex is just really, really well done. Reminds me a lot of Union actually by um, Mac Lenville. A map I tend to refer back to quite a lot when talking about Half Life Modding because it's one of my favourites. But the implementation of the uh, Vortigaunt in that reminds me a lot of Alex's implementation here. That is just done very, very well, very smoothly. Uh, the NPC companions kind of integrated well into kind of puzzle solving in the environments and things like that. So in Union you had to use the Vortigaunt to open up various uh, doors for you. Whereas in Deep Down, Alex is generally used to kind of activate things for you as well in certain different areas. Uh, this area looks great. I get, I get <laughs> it's just the, the inconsistency of visual quality is just something I keep coming back to. Because this area, again, it's episode 2 quality. And then when you go back inside the mines here, it gets really, really boxy and fairly dull again. It's really annoying. What's wrong with this lift? Can you get it going again? There you go, we've got our new task, fix the lift. Seems to have done it. I never actually tried, but I wonder if you can turn off the thumper there. That would have been nice. Just have a, a little event happen if you do decide to turn it off, just completely unrelated to the story of the game. Just be nice to kind of react to players doing that. Have like a little antlion ambush or something. I'll have to go back and see if you can turn it off. 
And now we get into the mines. Which is kind of our location we'll be staying in for the rest of the mod. And uh, for the most part, they're done really, really well. There are a couple of, again, like I mentioned, corridors which seem very, very boxy. But for the most part, the aesthetic is basically the same as in Episode 2. It's just I think Episode 2 has slightly more variety in environments. There are some fantastic set pieces in the mines here though that um, we'll be coming up on a little bit later on. I just think some of the connecting corridors are a bit uninspired. Again, just very, very boxy with a, not a lot of visual detail. Is where, can, where we can open up the front door. Have to be a little bit careful, of course. <laughs> I like that you see all the explosive barrels there, just because the first time when I went in there, I wasn't really sure what door that was. And then when it falls down, you see your car outside. It kind of completes. And you understand where you are. Again, I think some of the corners in here, some of the 90 degree turns, are perhaps a little harsh for the car. It would have been nice to have some more kind of drawn out turns. I suppose it is in keeping with the whole mine aesthetic. They weren't really planning on having cars drive down here, I suppose. <laughs> but still, I think some, uh, some larger corners would have been nice. But the gameplay is actually really, really fun. You can kind of jump in with the car, take out a few zombies by ramming them and then get out and polish off the rest of them with you and Alex. It is good fun driving around here. Again, it's just the corners I've trouble with. Can't wait to blow this guy away. <laughs> Get back. So this area is quite nice. You see the uh, locked gate in front of the car back there. So you're kind of looking for a way to get around it. Taking the scenic route, eh? <laughs> this area is kind of scary to get across. To get all this debris constantly falling down, you have to kind of time your jump across. I like the reuse here of a familiar mechanic from episode 2. So you've got the mine lift here with the uh, the weights on it to kind of pull it downwards. Of course that was a puzzle in episode 2 when you're in the mines. It's used a little bit differently here. You don't really need to weigh down the lift. It's just kind of used to show the player that that lift is actually holding the door closed. So we have to move this minecart to actually open it. Simple but effective. I had real trouble with this jump, I have no idea why. I managed to do it practically first time in all the beta tries I went through this map and everything. 
course when I go and try and record my video it's just absolutely get it completely wrong twice <laughs> Luckily, this is a uh, we can salvage this a bit by just kind of driving carefully around the side, the bottomless pit. <laughs> this area is very cool. You get to the bottom and look back up. You kind of have this. Uh, Almost like a spiral slide going down, I suppose. Some nice displacement usage here, actually. Now, I can't remember if it was the first time I played this mod or not, but... Uh, I decided to check down in the water here to see if James had added a kind of secret area and uh, there was! <laughs> I was really happy about that. I mean, if you're going to kind of hide pickup boxes around your map, I think that is the best way to do it. So you have something that looks off the beaten path and if the player explores it then you reward them. Uh, I think mods like Station 51, which is the most recent example I can think of, just rewarded the player for doing way too little. The, the ex exploration in, in the second map of that mod didn't really mean too much. Because th there was just, you know, pickup crates just absolutely everywhere. It kind of diminishes the uh, feeling of accomplishment from actually finding stuff like that if you give it out really nearly all over the place. Now, I was actually fairly hesitant about this jump um, the first time I played this mod. It kind of looks like you're not going to make it. There is actually some careful kind of clip brushing around here for the car to make to make it a lot easier. Now, unfortunately... <laughs> well, I, I made it across, but not quite uh, how I expected it to happen. <laughs> I feel sorry for Alex kind of stuck in this death trap right now. picture extremely relevant, I think. <laughs> yeah, most of the time when I played this mod, I kind of make it over, no problem. It's a very good job you don't get car sick, yes. <laughs> yeah, we just about managed to do it. <laughs> Here we get a nice little vista before going on to the next part of the map. This area is very cool. Unfortunately, there's some visual oversights. So things like uh, these displacements here don't quite meet up the brush geometry, unfortunately. Aside from that, it's a very nice looking area. Great use of the waterfall particle effect. The only real thing here, I mean, this is a problem in all kind of Source Engine mods, but there's no actual particle lighting in the Source Engine, so you end up with these kind of full bright particle effects in a very dark area. It looks a little bit strange, but again, there's nothing James can do about that. It's a limitation of the current source engine. Now we can go further into the mines. And again, these corridors here are just incredibly simple, kind of... tubes with no real detail in them, unfortunately. I thought at first these narrow corridors would kind of 
stifle the gameplay somewhat, but you can get some interesting scenarios happen here where ant lines will pop out of the ground in the various intersections and either come from behind you or in front, and it's it's kind of cool actually. It reminds me of the uh, the scene in the vents in Aliens where you know you've got aliens scrambling down the vents in either side, and of course the characters are all trying to shoot them all. It's uh, it can be quite tense. I think I. I made it through quite easily in this playthrough, but others have been uh, a little bit more hectic. Let me climb up and take a look at what we're walking into. Now I've got a little bit more story here. I'm trying to grab, I think it's a crate up there. Can't quite tell from this distance. Unfortunately, there seems to be a little bit of a bug that happens here when that advisor scream hits you. You notice the uh, weapon model is out of place. This has happened to me on two separate playthroughs. It doesn't seem to happen to everyone, but it's the uh, view model underscore fog which gets changed. So uh, you can just copy the writing on the screen to uh, get it back to where it was. It's uh, view model underscore fog, and you want to set it back to 75 to get the weapon model looking correct. Again, it doesn't seem to happen every time, but just heads up. I'll see you for part three. <laughs>